So in this video, we're going to be going through my trading and investing strategy step by step. And the reason why I'm so excited is it's because I managed to put it down into a blueprint visual way so you guys can see how this strategy actually works. So we'll go through each of these bubbles, how, how it all works, how it's all linked together. And if you guys want to watch all the supporting videos and get a more of a granular understanding of this strategy, make sure you head over to the community tab and subscribe and get a copy of the Investing Almanac. And the Investing Almanac walks through the whole strategy in text form and gives you all the supporting videos that you need as well as an ultimate list of option trading and stock trading resources absolutely free make sure you go check that one out obviously after this video so there's kind of four main kind of sections in this and i've got a supporting slide for each one outside of the first one to kind of go through the overall piece and if you want me to actually do an in-depth you know, course or whatever you want to call it. Obviously, it'll be free on YouTube for you guys. Uh, comment down below if you want to see each individual videos for each section. But I will be going through it at a very high level and you have the almanac to kind of support you through this as well. So first and foremost, you have to have a trading account. And in the investing almanac, I've got, uh, you know, the best trading account for European users as well as for US users as well. So make sure you go check that one out. Um, we need to fund it. Now, there are two ways we're going to be funding this account. The first way is I'm assuming that everyone watching this channel has a primary income source, whether that's through your own business, through regular employment, consulting, whatever it may be. And whatever is left over after you paid off your expenses you know we really need to be putting that money into the actual investing account and if you don't have money at the uh, at the end of the month and this channel isn't really around budgeting and things like that but if you are interested comment down below i can definitely do some budgeting videos for you guys um you either need to increase your income so therefore you got um more left in the bottom line or you need to reduce your expenses to have more left on the bottom line. So I'm going to keep it as high level as that. But the aim is, is after you paid all the regular expenses and you've got an emergency fund of savings there, anything left over should be put into a trading account uh, or investing account to start you know, generating assets. So that's the first way. The second way, as you'll see here, you've got two lines coming in. Um from selling puts and selling covered calls so this is the the trading element of the overall strategy where what we're doing is we're going to be selling options and the premium we gain from selling options um again will be reinvested back into the account for it to grow and eventually the plan is is as you buy more companies and sell more puts and sell more cover calls, the income you generate from these two sources, you know, will surpass, you know, your primary income source that you've been investing or even your primary income source in general. That is the whole point of this particular strategy. And again, if you're new to selling puts, selling options, I go to it, I go through it uh, very briefly in this video, but again, refer to the Almanac. Um, it goes into it with all the supporting videos. So once we've invested into the account or while we're building up the investing account, because you might only be putting in $100 a month for argument's sake, <coughs> is what we need to do, we need to find companies below their intrinsic value. And what that basically means is, is trying to understand uh, the fair value. I'm just trying to find the right slide. Uh, understanding the fair value of a particular company. So what you'll see is, and Warren Buffett talks about this, and so does Ben Graham, using the concept of Mr. Market. Mr. Market is, you know, the price of, of an underlying stock. Sometimes it's, you know, it feels good about itself and it's high. Sometimes it feels bad about itself and it's low. And you'll have stocks that and companies, their share price ebb and flow as time goes on. And what we want to do is we want to find is what is the value of that business and what we want to try to do is find companies that are at or below 
their current intrinsic value. So when we do invest in these stocks, we're giving ourselves the best possible opportunity to make some capital appreciation as the stock rises. So again, the Almanac, and I'll link to it down below, has full videos dedicated to how this works with free tools, free resources, all in there. Make sure you go check that one out. <clears throat> so what we're doing, we're finding uh, quality companies. Once we've identified a, a, a quality company that is below its intrinsic value, we want to start investing in that company. And now there's two ways you can kind of do that. The first way is to dollar cost average into the stock. And the two brokers that I recommend in the Almanac allow you to do fractional shares. So instead of buying a minimum of one share of a company, you can buy a fractional amount of that company with any dollar amount as little as one dollar. So it doesn't matter if you're only starting with $100 and you want to go invest in Meta, for example, which is, you know, around the 170 mark uh, uh, per share. You can then go and invest $100 into Meta and own just under one share of Meta. And and I appreciate that not everyone will have, um, uh, will be able to sell puts because you need to have the collateral of 100 shares to be able to sell puts. So for most people uh, or viewers of my YouTube channel, depending on the stock, you will be dollar cost averaging. And an example of dollar cost averaging is, is <coughs> whether you have, um, fund the account weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, whatever that frequency is, is you, you want to keep buying the stock. Um, um, whenever it is assuming it's in and around or still below its intrinsic value and what will happen is is that your average price is basically this line but you basically buy at any point uh throughout this thing so you're not really looking at what the current price is as long as it's below its intrinsic value if you fund the account i don't know a hundred dollars a month for example you will just buy a hundred dollars of that stock and keep doing that until you reach 100 shares and there's a reason why you do this because when you trade options you need the ability to have 100 shares so that this option here will probably be the most for most people watching this channel but if you do have more money to invest or already have 100 shares of a stock that um i mean not not say or you have enough collateral to sell uh puts on 100 shares of the stock what you can do then is start generating income to again fund your account. <clears throat> so an example of this is Meta, and I pull this slide uh, from a from one of my other videos. Um, so I'll link to that down below if you want to check that one out. But <clears throat> in that video, I was going through kind of fair value and intrinsic value, and we can see here that in the data that I inputted. Meta had a intrinsic value price of uh, of three hundred and seventy nine dollars, and at the point where I took the screenshot, Meta was trading at one ninety one, so it was below its intrinsic value. And what I was saying there is is what you can do if you had eighteen thousand um, dollars, you could sell a cash secured put on Meta, and I use the example of the hundred and eighty strike. So you're saying. I'm willing to buy 100 shares of Meta at $180 um, at X expiration date. So that could be whenever. And I think the 24th of June, I know we're past that kind of now or near enough by the time this video comes out. Um, so I did take the screenshot about a month ago. So I think it was about a month out. So <clears throat> for that right is for you to buy 100 shares at 180 which again is still currently at the time below the current price of this uh, of this screenshot uh you would get five dollars and five cents per share and because we're talking 100 shares that's 505 dollars in your trading account in your pocket for placing this trade so hopefully you can start to see how you can generate income with this strategy um and grow your investing account and just for 30 days worth of work in placing a trade um, you would then receive 2.8 percent of your capital and you might not even own the shares currently i think meta is actually below 180 i think it's near enough now the uh 
165, 167 mark. So in this example, you probably would have got assigned these shares, but you were willing to buy at 191 anyway. So, and this is where that $505 that you made at this level would go back into your investing account. And let's say you were dollar cost averaging into Apple for argument's sake, and Apple sitting at about 130 odd, you'll be able to buy around, you know, four point something worth of shares in Apple through a put you sold over here. So this is the power of this strategy. So we find a company, we get to 100 shares, uh, either we dollar cost average and buy 100 shares, or you sell puts and wait till you get assigned. If you don't get assigned, so in the Meta example, if Meta closed at 185, you would then just write another put at 180 or 175 and collect more premium and reinvest it back into the account. So at this point, at step three, you own a minimum of 100 shares of X stock, right? Once you own the stock, so you own a stock, a quality company producing good fundamentals and is currently undervalued, what we then do is we then sell what we call is covered calls to collect more premium to reinvest back into your trading account. And what a covered call is, is you're saying, I'm willing to sell my 100 shares of Meta in the example that we're talking about now uh, at X price. So if I did get assigned at 180, um, saying I'm willing to sell my uh, 100 shares at 190, 200 um, by X date. And again, for that right, you would then generate uh, additional premium. So example of this is with PayPal. <coughs> so let's just say, for example, you own 100 shares of PayPal at a cost basis of 7,500, which is $75 per share. <coughs> PayPal currently is trading at 72.97, so you're currently down slightly in terms of the value of of your stocks in in PayPal, which is fine because <coughs> PayPal is below its intrinsic value. You want to hold this for the long term. So then, what you do is is then you say, okay, I'm willing to uh, sell my 100 shares of PayPal at a strike price of 78. So you're your cost basis is 75, so you want to sell above your cost basis. <coughs> and um, uh, with an expiration date of 30 days, so whatever the 30 days, which is July 22nd from when I'm kind of shooting this video, it's 23rd of June. Um, and for that right, at the 78th strike, you can get $2.76 per share, which because you have 100 shares, is $276 in premium, right? So again, you're holding a stock that you're currently down, but you're getting paid $276 for holding the stock for the next 30 days. So again, that income then goes into the trading account, which again, you can use the dollar cost average or, you know, just hold it there until you have enough money to then sell and put on something that you, you want, you're interested in, whatever it may be. Um, The plan is, in this, when you own the shares, is not really to sell your shares, even if the even if the stock price goes to seventy eight dollars. And we do these things by rolling options and various other things, which I'm not going to go through in this particular video because it's a bit more advanced. But even if you did sell uh, the seventy eight strike and PayPal ended up at seventy nine by expiration, you have to sell at seventy eight, but you bought it at seventy five, so that's three dollars. Uh, per share increase in capital appreciation. So that is, again, another $300 in the capital appreciation and $276 in option premium. So that would have been $576 if that worked out that way. And, and again, then you add that to your investing account. Now, if uh, PayPal dropped even further and closed uh, by the 22nd of July at 70, Uh, You then keep your shares, you keep the premium, you then write another covered call 30 days later. And again, you can do weeklies and monthlies and various other things. That's all down to you, personal preference. I like to do weeklies, if I'm honest, because you do make more money if 
all else being equal, if the share price goes down, you'd rather sell a monthly, but if the share price goes up, um, you make more money uh, if you did weekly times by four versus doing a monthly uh, cover call. But again, that's just going again a bit too deep into this, but that is the fundamental premise of my trading and investing strategy. And the reason why I call it a trading strategy and an investing strategy, because you use options to buy and sell uh, the stocks that you love um, that are below the intrinsic value to generate you premiums, which then go into your account. And the investing side is, is I personally do not want to sell my shares. So in the PayPal example, is let's just say I owned it at 75 and it's at 72. I would be selling 75, 76 calls to generate more premium because the closer you are to the current price, the more premium you get. And that's one of the reasons why I like to do weekly because if PayPal does shoot up, I can then roll my options and I keep rolling my options out because unless something changes in the fundamentals is the fair value of PayPal in the example is I think is at $120, $130. So I'm quite happy to still continue to uh, keep app, uh, keep PayPal, sorry, even if it was at 80, 85, I'll, I'll just keep trying to trail the stock price up as, uh, as my appreciation grows. And just very lastly, another kind of thing is what you can kind of do with this flexibility of this strategy is in this particular example. So you can see that I'm down on this, uh, on this particular, uh, thing. So I bought it at, at seven and a half thousand and now it's worth seven, just 7,300, right? So I'm about $200 down. I can then reinvest this premium into buying more PayPal shares. Now I'll, ha I'll end up having, what's that? Um, four -ish shares, something along those lines. Um, of uh of paper so i'll have 104 point something um shares but it will reduce my break even in my cost basis and again i have a dedicated video into how to manage this in in a lot more detail that goes through this step by step all the links are in the almanac it goes through everything selling shares below intrinsic value covered calls, selling options and all the supporting videos that you need to go through so make sure you subscribe head over to the community tab, depending on when you're watching this, just scroll down. There'll always be updated videos of things I'm adding to this thing. Um, and you'll find one of them, just watch out for this image and there will be a link inside there for you to go check that one out. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, and I shall see you guys in the next one.